Welcome back to another video folks. This is just a short video to give you a little bit of hobby inspiration and to let you see what's on my uh, workbench because not everything that I paint ends up as a video on YouTube so I thought I would just take a bit of time every now and again to do a quick share. So um, let's start over here. Uh, this section of Germans here is really a good example of recycling and reusing. Um, these Fallschirmjäger, for instance, they were cobbled together from, well, I don't know how many, I couldn't tell you how many Fallschirmjäger companies I've painted over the years. It's a lot, right? So um, there was always some extra bits and pieces lying around from those commissions, so I decided to cobble what I had into a little platoon. I have another platoon as well that I've, I've put together and that's um, of Pioneers but I'm going to keep that and make a specific Pioneer themed um, setting for them, you know, like uh, storyboarding the bases. But you can see these guys are probably mostly the earlier war sculpts with nothing much in the way of late war. You notice they've got like shot the sleeves rolled up and such like I think these are the like the ones you would maybe expect to see in, in Crete. But I've I've done them in late war smocks. And you can see here, see this guy with a slightly oversized grenade? And um, he's actually a a loader for the light mortar. I was shot on riflemen, so I thought, oh, wait a minute. A little snip, a little piece of a uh, metal rod and some green stuff. And there you go. Um cobble together out of the bits box, I've got a nice platoon, full strength platoon. And on the bases you can see I have made some shell craters, very simple little addition. I could do more with them, but I didn't want this to be a too complex a, a project. They were built up with milliput before I put the um the filler down which was, you know, like a typical kind of plaster filler and then a layer of Villagio Earth Effects on top and the shell craters, to get a different look to them I added in some actual earth it gets a lot... the, the Villagio Earth Effects are quite gritty it gets a lot more gritty when you add some earth to it very, very th fine earth and there's a nice little platoon cobbled together out of odds and ends lying around now this one here Let's take my time, this zooms quite fast. This is for a friend who I did some, well quite a lot, of uh, Hemming Goring division for. So I thought I was going to do a nice little objective, because once again, odds and ends lying around, extra figures. So you can see I've got a spare half track, I can't remember the designation of it, but it's been lying around for over 10 years, I bought it with some other stuff just to practice painting Flames of War. So I thought I'm going to use that. I'll bring it a bit closer, folks. This is a abandoned half-track. It slid off the road a bit. And these Herman Gordon guys are looting it, basically. You can see getting anything, anything useful out of the half-track ready to be coloured up and put to good use the, the telegraph pole is an, an old um, special order item from Flames of War and I've added a few bed rolls with some green stuff, a really quick and easy process um, I've shown you how I do it there on this but I'll come along to that in a minute but that didn't take a great deal of time once again just using bits and pieces lying around and you've got a nice objective so you may have something that you're not really using and some bits in your bits box that you could easily put together into a nice little um, focal point for your army and now we've got these guys now as part of an Egypt an eBay purchase, I ended up with an entire battery 
of 10.5 centimetre crew. I was like, what am I going to do with that? You know, I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll hang about, look on eBay and see if any guns come up. And I wanted metal guns. And lo and behold, four metal guns came up, minus her spades. So I had to dig around in my bits box. And there you go, I've got two sets of spare spades. Don't ask me where these come from, folks. Uh, so I snaffled them. Got them here, painted up the crew, got the guns, re-sprayed them. Apart from being a little bit dusty and hairy, they were in really good condition. And then I spent a bit of time. Let's see. One second, I'll just bring this over. Spent a bit of time just giving the bases a bit of extra character. Kind of inspired by the classic box set, which I do have, otherwise I'd be keeping these. But I've got the classic box set. So, once again, bits box. Raided for odds and sods, ammunition, crates, that's a, like a pack 40 um, ammunition crate, but it does the trick. The, um, the dugouts have been created in the same way as the shell craters on these guys. Just built up a large lump of the milliput, then put the basing down, the filler type basing with the covering on top. And incidentally, I forgot to mention, I'm using dark earth pigment colours on the bases as well. More of them on the craters and less of them on the, the flat surface. Same here, more of it applied to the, um, the earthen works and less applied to the, uh, just the flat earth, flat earth area. And there you go, a little bit of extra time spent, and it's not a lot, you can get a really distinctive looking platoon. You could do this with any of your artillery pieces for any nation. And as a command base, I've got whoops, command figure, a radio operator, and a guy with scissor scopes. Makes it a very, very busy base. But everything still fits on quite nice, quite natural. That everybody looks as though they're busy doing something as a team and you know a nice gun base is like a nice little diorama got lots of character I'll just put these guys back and looks really cool on the battlefield so once again odds and swords bits and pieces lying around coming together in a bit more of a if I can use the word serendipitous kind of way to um, get a nice platoon and I've sold these on eBay as well now um, there's some German stuff but Bagration is coming along so I've been working on my Soviet uh, forces first of all I've got a video on the go that will be out fairly soon on how to paint these um, heavy Soviet tanks the main focus is on this guy, but you can apply it in the same way as you can see over there. It'll be a different style to how these guys were um, painted. So now's a good chance to see these guys. And um, when this video comes out, you can have a comparison. This guy's going to be a bit more subtle, I would think. Um, but we'll see. Uh, the plans don't always necessarily turn out that way. Uh, but he's ready for some fading and highlighting. But next up, we've got these lovely little B-64s. You know, the guys at the back, they're the original resin and metal vehicles. And the guys at the front, they're uh, the plastic, five in a box. So I've kind of, the way I'm going to play these, I've kind of got two extra, but I painted them all at the same time anyway. Now, once again, just to help add a bit of character and also show command, I took a submachine gun I figured I had lying around, hacked them up a bit, stuck them in a turret of one of these guys and that'll be the commander for the platoon of three dug around in the bits box once more and got a guy with a pair of binoculars or he's going to be my observer BA64 I don't think I'll ever use more than three in a platoon but I can have a platoon of five you never know the, the trick way um recon in the game is just probably to more minimize them than maximize them because they're um they, they can get ideas above a station and get into a lot of trouble really quick. Now, just 
point out that these guys, they were not washed at all. They were painted up in the same way as I paint the figures, but applying very, very large, broad, sort of streaky strokes of paint. So you can see shading, but it's just acrylic, the first coat of acrylic paint. And then strengthened at some points by just being painted directly in, for instance, around the, the driver's hatch. And then I've used pigments, painting them directly into fenders, for instance. Let's see how the sky looks. Excuse me, people. You can see, if I can get it there, there's pigments on the underside of that. Pigments on the wheels. You can see the shading there coming across. Okay, that's just painted on. And I applied a, a filter, a grey filter for that, just to um, brighten them up. I don't know why I thought they needed brightened up, but, <laughs> but there you go. But they are small vehicles and I do prefer my smaller vehicles to be brighter. So there's the B64s, they'll be making an appearance soon. And then here is my IS-122 platoon. These guys were weathered with acrylics using glaze medium as a, a way of working and uh, working the paint and being a paint retarder as well, a drying retarder, and some pigment. So I'll take this guy over here for instance. You can see yep, the dusting on the top of the turret. That's acrylic paint. It's not enamel paint. It's not uh, pigment powder, but you can achieve that look with a retarder such as a glaze medium. Now, these guys didn't. I mean, I'm not 100% happy with them, but I think they're still going to look really cool on the tabletop. Hopefully, the the modulation is showing up okay in this picture, but they're dark to, to medium to light, but not too light on the top edge. And then, because they're big eyes too as well, kind of chunky bits to them, you can kind of go to town. Here I've nicked off parts of the fenders, put an accumulation of mud. This one here, where are we, sorry? This one here I've taken the fenders right back on both sides, and that's a really cool look. A really cool looking tank. And I just kind of went to town with the weather and all over them. Lots of storage as well. And a ditching log. It's a little on the big side, but it's a very quick, easy um, thing to do with just a bit of sprue. And I, I'll go through that in some detail on the video for that. So very, very soon I've finished my Soviet heavy assault guns, which will mean the Soviet forces are all ready for action, for migration. This table here we're going to use tomorrow, I hope, to have a live game. Um, when I say tomorrow, that might, <laughs> that's tomorrow from the point of view of me recording this video. I'll see if I can get this one posted straight away. Um, so we're going to have a live game, maybe the start of many live games, and um, Bagration is going to be our first set of books and um, period. So hope you enjoyed that folks. I'll try and share things as regularly as I can so you get a flavour of what's on the workbench and possibly share ideas with you that the longer videos perhaps don't um, uh, don't allow me to. Thanks for watching folks. If you enjoy it, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe, share the videos around, help me build the channel and I'll keep this content coming for you.